News. We're just learning the Air Force group that runs one third of the nation's land based nuclear, nuclear weapons has failed a safety inspection. Barbara Starr at the Pentagon joins us now with more. Barbara, how badly did they fail and how dangerous is this? Well, it is a problem. No, no mistake about it, Jake, for the U.S. Air Force. This is an Air Force wing in Montana, about 3,000 people, about 150 Minuteman III nuclear intercontinental ballistic missiles. This week, the Air Force says the entire wing failed a safety and security inspection. What they will not tell us, because it's so highly classified, is exactly what, quote, tactical errors were made uh, that led to the fail mark on the inspection. And they say the nuclear weapons were always safe. But, Jake, this is the second of three wings. There's only three nuclear wings in the U.S. Air Force. Two of them so far this year, this is number two, have failed security and safety inspections. Another one earlier this year at Minot, North Dakota. In that case, 17 members of the military were removed from their positions after that wing failed. So the big question here, I think people agree the nuclear weapons are safe. And just uh, how much does America's nuclear stockpile make the country safer? I mean, how much do you feel safe as, you know, living in a country which has the biggest nuclear stockpile? Well, actually, I do not feel safe. I feel endangered by the nuclear stockpile. And, and this is a particularly troubling incident whenever you consider that just four months ago, we had 38 officers were relieved of their command, relieved of duty uh, for a very similar incident to what this is uh, that just happened Tuesday. I think people agree the nuclear weapons are safe. Uh, that's what the Air Force tells us. No indication they're not. But are procedures just getting lax in the nuclear community? And that is a big problem. Jake? And Barbara, give us the bottom line here. What does this mean for national security? Well, what it means for the Pentagon and national security is the worry that some of these procedures, that some of the personnel are just getting lax in, in their nuclear operations. And, you know, there's very little room for error anywhere in the U.S. military. But in nuclear weapons, there is no room for error. The Air Force is very strict about this. You know, if like one person is off duty when they should be on duty, that can lead to a fail mark in an inspection. It's that kind of detail in nuclear weapons. You just can't have an error. Jake? Astounding. Barbara Starr at the Pentagon, thank you so much. Okay. This is Minot Air Force Base, just outside snowy Minot, North Dakota. Minot describes itself as one of the best kept secrets in the Air Force. Best kept secret, perhaps, because it is in the middle of nowhere. And I don't mean that in a bad way. It's in the middle of nowhere for a good reason. Minot Air Force Base has the job of housing lots of our nation's nuclear warheads. They're stored in sod-topped bunkers on the high plains of North Dakota. And it's the job of the men and women of that command to essentially babysit 150 giant intercontinental ballistic missiles and hundreds of smaller warheads. They guard and maintain our nuclear missiles at all times, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and they are the ones in charge of launching them, in some cases, if we ever decide to do that. Well, on August 29, 2007, a day like any other at Minot, one of those weapons handling teams was tasked with transporting some soon-to-be decommissioned cruise missiles. They're supposed to fly them down to Barksdale Air Force Base in Louisiana. The mission was to fly those cruise missiles to Louisiana, and importantly, these were not supposed to be live nuclear missiles. They were going to take off the nuclear warheads, replace the warheads with dummy weights just for balance, and then send them away. However, Instead of retrieving the missiles with the dummy weights attached to them, the Air Force crew at Minot accidentally loaded onto that plane six cruise missiles that had live nuclear warheads on them. 
They loaded actual nuclear weapons onto a B-52 bomber and sent it on its way to Louisiana. The, pol the pilots had no idea. Six nukes, each with roughly the capacity to cause Hiroshima times 10, were mistakenly sent on a cross-country flight. That bomber, I'm not kidding you, was named Doom 99. And Doom 99 departed Minot on schedule, and for the first time in 40 years, a nuclear-armed bomber crossed U.S. airspace without clearance. Luckily, the warheads made their way to Louisiana without incident, and upon landing, they sat unguarded on the runway at Barksdale for nine hours, until the ground crew there finally realized with a resounding OMG that they had accidentally acquired six live nuclear weapons they weren't expecting, and they had left them sitting around unguarded for nine hours. After that debacle at Minot, Defense Secretary Bob Gates gave the boot to the Secretary of the Air Force and the Air Force Chief of Staff. He put into place a new system to try to do what we can as a nation to prevent our nuclear weapons from going missing again. Whether or not you think it makes sense as a military mission to have these 5,000 nuclear weapons that we have, whether you can imagine 5,000 targets for things we might reasonably want to one day nuke, as long as we have 5,000 nuclear weapons laying around, one of our responsibilities is to not lose them or drop them or whatever. One measure that the Air Force instituted to prevent another Minot to Barksdale debacle was to implement no warning inspections at Air Force bases that house nuclear warheads. And in March of this year, one of those inspections took place at Minot, thus giving the Minot missileers a little chance to redeem themselves after their great embarrassment. Here are some photos from that inspection. Minot officials posting these photos on their official website afterwards. Everything seems to be going along fine. Everybody's kind of smiley or at least competent looking in all these pictures. Minot officials publicly declared afterwards that the inspection was a success. No more problems at Minot. No more nuclear oopsies. But what we have now learned, thanks to some great reporting from the AP, is that that inspection in March actually was not that big a success. Not only did the base earn the equivalent of a D grade, a D letter grade, when it came to their missile launch operations, but look at the big AP headline here. Air Force sidelines 17 nuke officers. After that inspection in March, the Air Force quietly removed 17 officers at Minot from the highly sensitive duty of standing 24-hour watch over the Air Force's most powerful nuclear missiles, the most extensive sidelining ever of launch crew members. So despite publicly asserting that the inspection was a success, the AP obtained an internal email from one of the deputy commanders at Minot who wrote after the inspection, quote, we are in fact in a crisis right now. He described the cause of the crisis as rot in the crew force. A problem of motivation, essentially, he explained. Those 17 officers will be sidelined for a couple of months, but it does not end with them. In addition to the 17 people who were taken off missile duty, possible disciplinary action, this is amazing, is possible against one other officer at Minot who investigators found had purposefully broken a missile safety rule in an unspecified act that could have compromised the secret codes that enable the launching of the missiles. Oh, how desperately I want to know what that unspecified act was. The Air Force initially tried to deal with this whole thing quietly by shuffling these guys off the sidelines for a couple of months and declaring victory in their inspection. But the AP's reporting on it this week has sort of broken this thing back open, so much so that the Defense Secretary, Chuck Hagel, is now demanding answers from the Air Force about what exactly is going on in our nation's nuclear mission. It should probably be noted here that Chuck Hagel's previous life, his life before becoming Defense Secretary, included his membership in a group called Global Zero, which is a nuclear policy organization that advocates for a world without nuclear weapons. Chuck Hagel himself signed on to a report that called for getting rid of the Air Force's entire intercontinental ballistic missile arsenal altogether. Yes, that same one that we are firing people from for incompetence now and whose leaders say is in crisis. How Chuck Hagel deals with this is going to be amazing to watch. Watch this space. Moving on, last but not least, Air Force Global Strike Unit, which operates one third of the U.S. land's based nuclear missiles, has failed a safety and security inspection. The failure marks the second major setback this year for a force charged with the U.S. military's most sensitive mission. Commanders of the unit say a team of airmen failed one exercise that ended Tuesday. They say for security reasons, they cannot be specific about the team or the week-long exercise. They also say that to elaborate could reveal a potential vulnerability in the force. 
Malmstrom is one of three U.S. nuclear missile wings. Each wing operates 150 minute man and three intercontinental ballistic missiles. The wings are on alert for potential launch against targets around the world. Let's talk to Mike Harris, a political commentator from Phoenix. Welcome to the program. So, Mr. Harris, uh, first of all, how is it that the U.S. is calling for the removal of nuclear warheads and stockpiles and in general moving towards a nuclear-free world, uh, yet at the same time we see instances like this? I mean, how do these two statements mix? Well, they don't mix. Uh, this is very hypocritical on point of the, the U.S. and I, for one, advocate uh, the destruction of all nuclear weapons uh, globally. That is my personal feeling. I would like to see our, 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 our government, our U.S. government, actually disarm and, and enable the other countries to disarm around the world as well, particularly in the Middle East. Uh, there's only one country with nuclear weapons there. That's Israel, and they should be disarmed immediately. And just uh, how much does America's nuclear stockpile make the country safer? I mean, how much do you feel safe as, you know, living in a country which has the biggest nuclear stockpile? Well, actually, I do not feel safe. I feel endangered by the nuclear stockpile. And, and this is a particularly troubling incident whenever you consider that just four months ago, we had 38 officers were relieved of their command, relieved of duty uh, for a very similar incident to what this is uh, that just happened Tuesday. And uh, I mean, uh, the fact that uh, getting rid of nu nuclear weapons is, uh, is a move taken up by many countries. I mean, is there any side effect with, uh, with this? Well, nuclear weapons are not something that you can use. They're, they're something that you have. Um, it, they, they produce no productive value. They, they're, they're not a deterrent. All they can do is keep other people from attacking you because you will retaliate. The U.S. lived on that doctrine of mutually assert, assured destruction for the entirety of the Cold War. And all we did was spend trillions of dollars. Uh, the, we spent the Soviet Union into bankruptcy. And it, it is a great waste of time and money. And it's something that needs to be stopped immediately. Indeed. Well, we'll have to leave it there. Many thanks to Mike Harris, political commentator from Phoenix. Thanks for your time there, sir.